So you can imagine the challenges of exploring the role of diet and nutrition in any study, but especially in a study on ADHD. Why? Well, because as I mentioned before, children with ADHD, and it turns out adults with ADHD, tend to pursue sugary foods or any types of food that increase their levels of dopamine. They are naturally drawn to those foods, whether or not they realize it or not, presumably as a way to try and treat their lack of focus and impulsivity. So in this study that I'm about to share with you, there was no drug treatment. It was just a study manipulating diet and involved 100 children, 50 in the so-called elimination diet group, the special diet where certain foods were eliminated, and 50 in the so-called control group. This study also included a crossover, meaning where the, the kids would serve as their own control or control group at a certain portion of the study. So they would be in one group where they eliminated certain foods. And then after a period of time in the study, they would swap to the other group. This is a powerful way to design a study for reasons that you can imagine because you start to eliminate changes and effects due to individual differences. In this study, every single one of the effects is P less than 0.0001, very, very infinitesimally small probability that the effect observed could be due to chance. So what were these effects? These effects were enhanced ability to focus, less impulsivity, even less tendency to move when trying to sit still. So everything from mental focus to the ability to control their bodies improved when they were in the elimination diet group. What was eliminated? Well, the elimination diet in this particular study was a so-called oligoantigenic diet. It was a diet in which each kid took a test to determine which foods they had antibodies for, meaning that they were mildly allergic to. Now, in this study, it was very important that the kids not be extremely allergic to any food because, as I mentioned before, they actually served as a control at one point in the study where they were eating all sorts of foods, including foods that they had mild allergies to. So basically what this study said was that eliminating foods to which children have allergies can dramatically improve their symptoms of ADHD. And this study, not surprisingly, because it was published in such a high quality journal, Lancet, et cetera, large number of subjects, set the world on fire. People were extremely excited about these results because here in the absence of any drug treatment, there was a significant improvement in ADHD symptoms observed. And then came the criticisms. So many papers were published after this specifically dealing with reanalysis of these data. And I want to be fair in saying that the data in the paper look good, but there are criticisms of the overall structural design of the study. I don't want to go into all the details exactly because it gets really nuanced about some of the statistics and the way that one examines these types of data. But there was skepticism and in science, skepticism is healthy, especially when making decisions about whether or not to treat or feed children one food or another or give them one drug or another. Elimination of simple sugars has a dramatic and positive effect. She's observed that over and over and over again in many dozens, if not hundreds of patients. Okay. Now that's not a peer reviewed study. That's a statement that I'm conveying to you anecdotally, but it's a highly, highly informed one. There's another camp that's starting to emerge in the peer reviewed scientific literature showing that when kids are not exposed to certain foods, in particular nuts and things of that sort, they develop allergies to those foods. And then when exposed to them later, they cause real problems. So there's a whole galaxy of discussion and controversy and outright fighting about allergies in kids and whether or not the oligoantigenic diet is the appropriate one. <laughs> 